Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening here in the city of Missoula and beyond. I have a couple things. I got some dub and stuff. I got your city council meeting of the day where uh, um, the month of December is celebrating 100 years of independence for Finland. I'll have that and more later on in the show, but let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Um, it is currently 21 degrees outside. Um, your... Uh, High is going to be 30, woo, and there's going to be snow likely and patchy, patchy freeze and fog like it has been in the last couple days. Uh, tonight, your low is going to be 15 degrees, so you want to dress a little warmer than you have in the last couple weeks. Um, the temperature is pretty much going to be stagnate this way pretty much throughout the whole entire week. Uh, Thursday is going to be the really chilly day, so be aware that Thursday's high is 23 and the low is going to be 15. So I'll, I'll have to be aware of that and maybe uh, email some people at uh, Washington Middle School since we'll be coming here for our last day of flagship. So uh, this is also the last week of flagship, as I kind of just mentioned. And uh, I still have plenty of flagship videos for you guys for Flagship Friday video of the week. So I'll talk about that. Um, I'll be showing some more Flagship Friday videos uh, on Fridays, of course. Why would I show it today? It's, it's, it's Wednesday, uh, the 13th. So uh, let's kick things in the gear and let's talk about some news that is happening in and around the city of Missoula. So interim, outgoing interim president Celia Stearns is talking about um, uh, basically re released a priorities list of basically uh, all this stuff the, the university will keep around. It's a draft. Um, Stern's draft states, I announce a prioritization, sorry about that, initiative to faculty senate on February 9th, 2017, shared governance groups, SGGS, uh, sorry, S -S -S SGGs, followed by a mid-February with uh, re resolutions about approaches to the project. So basically, if you go to the list, you kind of see like it's a long formal draft and you can kind of uh, get a quick little glimpse of just like the how long it is so yeah there's a lot of pages on here if you guys want to read through it and it is basically being offered through the Missoulian and you can check that out anytime they say they have a link on there on the where it says reports here it's a hyperlink you can't miss it so though some of the bullet points that I kind of um, am going to be talking about is that what they what the university wants to do is invest in programs that uh, um, de uh, basically support uh, retention, uh, per uh, persistence, and um, completion. So the programs that have more students, basically majority rules. Invest in UM Global Engagement Office by building on current wide-ranging success, energizing all efforts through collaboration, achieve savings through uh, co cooperative efforts, so grants. Um, invest in growing graduate programs unique to UM, such as MBA and Master's in uh, Accountancy and in the College of Business. So emphasize College of Business so they can uh, use money and stuff. So basically the program that would get people to new year areas of money, I mean a work that would support the university in the long run. And of course you can read the draft yourself, uh, graduation matters, but the highest rate of decline is actually from students who leave the university within the years uh, as undergraduate students. So they have a big uh, dropout rate when it comes to sophomore, and well, actually transfer, mostly transfer, but it's, um, it's the sophomore and juniors that tend to leave more. So Stearns has continued to stress that the UM spends less on personnel, will be spending less on personnel in order to invest in other needs such as technology and the report notes, the campus will reduce faculty in the near term future. So basically it will be up to Seth Bodner, uh, incoming president to figure things out. In the, uh, <laughs> that sounds a little too biased, sorry about that. So in state, let's move on. Uh, Montana Game and Hunting offered 1,200 more tags for a special session for hunters. Unfortunately, they're already been taken up. Uh, they're all, they sold out within three hours of being released at 5 a.m. the other morning. 600 tags were offered for mule deer and whitetail deer. Um, they said that uh, they saw some Facebook posts of 200 either sex deer tags sold out in only 10 minutes. The season opened Friday, December 15th and could extend until February 15th. The season will be halted for either or both species if the quota of 200 white-tailed deer or 200 mule deer is reached. A solid sampling of deer is st statistic, uh, statistically determined the prevalence of chronic wasting disease in the Carbon County deer population. All successful hunters are required to submit their deer, deer for testing and must move a deer 
was shot in the area out of Carbon or Yellowstone counties unless it is boned out and the antlers contain no flesh. So far, six deer in the area have tested positive for exposure of chronic waste and disease. Four mule deer bucks, one mule deer doe, and one white-tailed doe. The goal of the hunt is to determine the pre uh, prevalence and distribution of chronic wasting disease within the hunt area. This is crucial to information of fish, wildlife, and park as it plans for long-term disease management in the area. So it's going to be interesting for some hunters out there, but be aware that uh, it's good to get your deers tested um, just in case they might have this wasting disease. So just letting you guys know, you, you, you know, you might enjoy the hunt, but you might not enjoy the meat. So let's move on to the next national um, things that are happening on here as well. Um, so, you know, in Jurassic Park, where uh, they said that uh, um, mosquitoes were the source of all the blood where they could uh, bioengineer dinosaurs, but apparently some scientists from Oxford University uh, found out that uh, they are able they were able to get some blood from ticks. So ticks are very ancient, and scientists who study their evolution have long wondered uh, what or who the little vampires ate before they were lots of mammals to feed on. Feathered dinosaurs apparently were among the possible creatures on the menu. Um, so, the Oxford University Museum of Natural History and an author of this studi study published Tuesday, just last yesterday, in a journal, um, National Communications, Amber Can Be Actually Preserve Interactions Between Organisms. So, you know, like the tree sap that you saw in Jurassic Park, you know, it covered the mosquito, and it's like, oh, wow, great, let's drill into it and let's get the blood. Um, but uh, it's a little more complicated than that because apparently not only is the organization preserved in there, but also the blood. So there's also mixtures of minerals and stuff there as well. So there's more work to be done to clarify ancient or origins of the ticks and their blood-sucking behaviors. For example, one amber specimen contains a tick engorged with blood, but Perez de la Fuerte and his co-authors couldn't find out how to analyze that blood because the tick wasn't wasn't entirely in because the tick wasn't entirely encased in amber, so the iron in the blood was contaminated with minerals. But this is a nice step in mapping out the past of genes via the blood from the past, and apparently this was uh, 99 million years old. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the world today. But let's talk about, let's let's centralize back in Missoula. We got some new programs going to be airing on MCAT for the next couple days. We got Missoula out and about. We got more brown bag lecture series where they're talking about fracking and how bad it is for other countries and how some uh, how we can learn from other countries to better prevent that kind of thing from happening to our uh, uh, underwater aquifers. So we have that and more, um, uh, kind of like a ghost hunters program um, as well. So stay with us. We have a lot more show to go. So we'll be right back. So we're talking about exporting mostly, from the US at least, mostly fracked natural gas to these growing nations who are desperate to meet their climate goals and to reduce the reliance on coal. It's a real conundrum. Um, it also makes for a really good story <laughs> that I'm excited to write, um, but it kind of makes your head spin because you're talking about global net benefit versus uh, local, hyper-local potential damage to an aquifer, say, from, from fracking. That's, I know that's debated, but uh, there is evidence showing that, that fracking affects groundwater and drinking water. So for me, um, my goal is to stay really engaged in what's happening in Indonesia and learn more about all of these countries. Um, as, I've, as a journalist, I've, um, you know, I think starting with the Otter Creek coal mine proposal, that really led me to dive into global energy economics. And it's pretty amazing once you start learning about it. And um, Star, you want to tell people a little bit about the space that we're in, which is a pretty remarkable area. It is. So the city leased this from Harvey and Mitzi Klaus uh, four years ago to, uh, to grow these trees. The primary purpose, at least for me, to grow in these trees is we take out about a million gallons of treated effluent a day to water these trees between May 1st and September 30th. And the reason is, that although we have a high quality of effluent we discharge to the Clark Fork River, this takes out about 20 to 25 percent more phosphorus and nitrogen out of the Clark Fork River during the summer, summer months, which that's important because that's the algae growing season. That's what I like. And this is a very economical way to keep 
nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen out of the Clark Fork River and then put it to beneficial reuse. Yeah, and so we're in a stand of over, by now you figure there's over 100,000 poplar trees here. About a, about 180 acres, 100,000 trees, roughly. That's amazing. He heard somebody say, oh yeah, you're from Nyrata, and he's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and they're like, oh yeah, so you know Hannah Flagg, or the story of Hannah Flagg, and he's like, who's that? He's like, oh yeah, she's the lady who started on the stagecoach stop, had two little girls, and like he like almost crapped his pants because literally this his friend kept telling him about how he saw this girl, or this woman and her two girls, and he would she would help them and whatever else, but he was always him and he was always drunk when this happened, so the guy thought he was nuts. <laughs> Come to find out that other people have the same experience. So, you know, we were up there a few times, and I tell you, it's real creepy up there, but we didn't have anything super scary happen. Like, there was a point where we heard, like, livestock, like, rustling, like something was chasing them, and but we didn't see anything, but like again, again, it's so dark. There's no cell service. You're like in the middle of nowhere. So without- That's really with, narrow. Yeah, and super narrow. Oh, and there's too. literally, there was, there used to be a hotel and a bar there too. Um, and literally there's nothing there anymore that the hotel and the bar burned down. But people used to say that the hotel was haunted as well. And, you know, so it was a super cool story to kind of have as a premiere episode for our, our series. But then we found that like all we had was a story. We couldn't document anything and, you know, what are you going to do, drive up and down the highway for two hours because it's literally like a 10-mile stretch between two places and there's no, like, focal point in a lot of it? You know, so unfortunately, that's that happens a lot. And I asked Dylan about that. She's like, you know, I think that just like stereotypes, I feel like there's a kernel of truth in everything, you know, but what is that kernel of truth? And, you know, it has to start from somewhere. Ghost Hunters, Missoula, Montana, or somewhere in Montana. So anyways, l those are some of the programs that are going to be airing on MCAT for the next couple of days. If you are interested in finding out more about that, and of course MCAT, you go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is where you can make programs such as the programs that you just saw on our channel, but also you can make your own programs. You can make music videos, you can make all sorts of fun little things. It's You're only limited by your imagination. Every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. we have orientation, except for tonight, because MCAT is hosting a a holiday party for the uh, staff and council or it's a council staff and board of MCAT so uh, we're gonna be doing that um, if you got the invite great but if you didn't don't come um, so we'll probably bypass the uh, training tonight but we'll have it it's pretty much every single Wednesday so you can't miss it so um, every Wednesday 5 30 p.m. except for tonight um, yeah I mean we're gonna have MCAT uh, regular hours from 11 to 7 uh, but of course today we'll be open until about 11 to 5 so if you want to come in any time between that we can actually get you trained in and ready to go and out with a camera or if you just want to kind of check out MCAT. MCAT is uh, a great resource for people to learn broadcasting. It's a good stepping stone into a broadcasting field so you'll be like hey I want to work for the KPAX or KESI news station. MCAT is a good place uh, where people, a lot of people get sent to uh, when they're just like I need to get a camera. Where do I get a camera? MCAT's the place to be. But, you know, that's my little spiel about MCAT. Uh, MCAT also hosts uh, Saturday drop-ins. Um, we're going to be doing Saturday drop-ins this Saturday and the la and the next Saturday after that. But we won't be doing it on the Saturday for um, New Year's Eve because we're going to be leasing out the studio to uh, Sin uh Cineflex, which is a YouTuber group that will be doing a 36-hour live stream. So they're going to be doing that. So uh, once again, um, Saturday drop-in animation will happen this Saturday and next Saturday, but won't happen on the 30th of January. So just be aware of that. Um, Saturday drop-ins is a great way, place for kids to create through Legos, an animation, we got Flash Adobe, all sorts of fun little programs that kids get to explore and basically kind of figure out um, how to make a movie with inanimate objects, um, and also learn the most valuable lesson of all, patience. Uh, but let's move on. Um, it is time for your city council report, and we're kicking things off with uh, an issue that one of the people I in Missoula had with um, homelessness, um, that population that have a tendency to be drunk outside her property. So this is uh, Jessica uh, Vazuti, and this is what she had to say. This is her story. I'm here today to strongly urge City Council to move to action on the issue of intoxicated and mentally disturbed people who live on our streets in our community. I have increasingly needed to call the police in my own neighborhood because our park has become a place for people to dry out as they wait for being able to go somewhere else to the homeless shelter. Um, 
I no longer feel safe walking to my local grocery store, especially when the response to the problem continues to be that we are aware of the problem. Um, I appreciate that the police are aware of the problem, but I would like to see action in the form of an active and friendly police presence in my area. Recently, myself and my infant son were verbally assaulted and chased by a person who was ill or suffering from addiction two blocks from my home. I found the police response inadequate, and I asked for your help to encourage engaged and friendly patrols in my neighborhood in addition to just being aware. I would really like to build a positive relationship with everyone in my community, whether they're homeless or dealing with a problem. Um, but in short, if you would like to know more details of my concerns or the issues we're having in my neighborhood, I am happy to connect in person or on the phone. I don't want to take up more time, but I just want to bring it to your attention. This is an ongoing and growing issue in my neighborhood, and I appreciate your time. All right, so uh, that was Jessica. And, of course, I, I wanted to also retort some of what I said. It's it not necessarily just people who are homeless. or, or I mean, it's like I don't want to – Sti like put a stigma on certain people who are homeless who are just um, in an emergency housing kind of situation at that point not all homeless are the cause of problems just that being said of course uh, many of the people who oh, go out of their way to help these folks cannot uh, take an aggressive stance um, many organizations do not actually take in people who are on drugs or intoxicated the Pavarella turns people away if they uh, look like they're drugged up or intoxicated um, but those people must take the steps to sober up before many of these organizations in the city of Missoula can actually even help them so uh, um, ba so let's move on uh, there's no there's no easy uh, segue so let's talk about Finland who is celebrating 100 years free of Russian rule and their independence so here is the mayor John Engen with that proclamation uh, whereas the Republic of Finland declared its independence from Russia on December 6, 1917, and whereas Finnish immigrants contributed significantly to the history, economy, arts, and culture of Montana, and whereas descendants of Finnish people continue to contribute to Missoula and Montana's vibrant cultural and economic well-being, and whereas December 6, 2017 marks the 100th anniversary of Finnish independence, now therefore I, John Engen, the state of Missoula and the state of Montana, hereby recognize the month of December as Finland's 100th anniversary of Independence Month. And that goes out to my friend Jay Slaxo. All right, so that's John Engen with the proclamation. Um, um, Marilyn Marler uh, responds to this proclamation in these words. I was a foreign exchange student back in the 80s, which seems like a really long time ago, to the northern land of Finland. It's a wonderful place. It had a big impact on my worldview. Um, and cold tolerance. Okay. And I remember when I when I was there as a foreign exchange student, and it was um, in the um, Independence Day, and it was really impressive to me just what a what kind of a somber, really thoughtful holiday it was, coming from you know teenager Fourth of July Independence Day celebrations in the United States. It was just an interesting con contrast and. Um, I was happy to be a part of it then. I appreciated hearing about it now. I can't believe it's been 100 years since I was in Finland. Well, it feels like it's been 100 years since I was in Finland. Um, so I'll just close by saying Hyvä Suomi, which is good job, Finland. All right, so that was Marilyn Marler with a reaction comment to uh, the proclamation. Uh, Gwen Jones has another thing that she's, she talked about, and she's talking about one of her favorite uh, judges slash peoples, Harry uh, Perkinson, who just died la um, last November. And this is what she had to say and how he impacted um, the state of Montana. Um, a couple of interesting facts about him. When the Century Freeway was being built during, uh, through Los Angeles, a, law, a lawsuit regarding it came to him, and as a district court judge at that point, he halted construction on it and mandated that they had to provide affordable housing for all of the neighborhoods that they were disrupting and also job training. The Century Freeway through Los Angeles wound up costing twice as much because of Harry Pregerson. They also named an interchange after him by the time it was all done. Um, in Montana, Judge Pregerson was the mediator for saving the 10th Street Bridge located in Great Falls, which I'm going to check out next time I'm there. I guess he was instrumental in that and even as a mediator wrote poetry to both sides regarding the 10th Street Bridge and ultimately saved that structure. 
Um, he was also instrumental in a 1994 case involving Flathead Lake and the Salish Kootenai tribes uh, as there were issues regarding who truly got to control the lake that was within the reservation, and Pregerson wrote the opinion and said the tribe got to control the lake. And he was a, a big advocate for Indian law and Native American rights. So the last thing I want to leave with you is that a few days before he died, he, he sat on the court up until this fall, and then he was ill for a few weeks before he died. He was 94 years old, and a couple of days before he died, he turned to his wife, Byrne, and he said, the hardest thing is that I don't have strength anymore to help people. And I think service and local government and the judiciary are all difficult jobs, but I wanted to leave you with that because Harry Pregerson added a lot to our world, and especially Montana. All right, so uh, uh, um, Harry Pregerson died on November 25th, 2017. He was 94 years old. Uh, basically, Pregerson's ju judicial pr philosophy is frequently character characterized as liberal. The conservative uh, commentator Hugh Hewitt criticized him for judicial activism and rules with his heart instead of his head. Uh, basically, let's talk about, let's move on. Um, um, last Friday, I was talking about the Scott Street Village and th th some of the things when they're talking about the uh, senior sub, uh, sub um, senior suborb subordinate, sorry, senior subordinate um, urban renewal revenue bond. And this is going to sale of 723514 maximum principal amount of tax increments. So this is going to be a TIF site. Um, while they're building the new neighborhood, that will also help support um, taxes. Basically, adding new houses and new people to add the taxes would also be going into building the infrastructure in the area. Um, John DeBari uh, didn't like it too much, so he put uh, so he put up and th the last item of discussion. So um, here is uh, John DeBari um, talking about it. And I just thought that there was uh, there really wasn't a sufficient amount of time to have. Uh, Councillors ask questions if, if we have to be running out of time in the committee. And I know um, it's also a complicated project that involves public resources, and I thought it would be worth uh, having Mr. Behan be present in case uh, folks wanted to ask him questions because he wasn't uh, uh, able to attend the, the committee meeting. So um, it wasn't any fundamental opposition to the project. I just thought it was uh, a good opportunity to take a little bit more time and have folks ask questions if they All right, so, so sorry about that. Uh, a lot of the audio is very, really distorted, um, uh, but Sire should be fixed by the next couple of meetings that are happening today as well. But here's Chris Bian, and he is kind of a uh, uh, response to some of the confusion about this uh, senior uh, subordinate um, bond that they want to pass. So basically, uh, in moving into that, that relatively new district, that has an enormous amount of need over there in terms of infrastructure, particularly roads, water, and sewer. Um, we almost immediately after the, the, the district was created, were approached by three developers to help out in projects over there. At the same time, we, we uh, initiated and actually completed, by the time those were done, uh, a master planning effort for that area, a very extensive master planning effort. It turned out that all three of those projects were exactly what the, the master plan was hoping for in the areas that they happened to be in. Those were expansion of the Brett's RV and Marine facility, the construction of Consumer Direct, uh, the, the Home Health Care's uh, national headquarters, and expansion of the North Side neighborhood to the West, which has long been a, a a desire of the neighborhood and their planning efforts uh, through uh, the Scott Street Village project, a three-phase project, a residential project that was trying to put together a affordable workforce housing uh, as best they can uh, in Missoula these days. All right, so that's the basic goal of Chris Bian, and, and of course they've been working on this Northside Master Plan project for quite some time. This phase one is part of the Scott Street Village. Phase two is another extension of another kind of neighborhood, and by doing this, they're adding more houses and more kind of like taxes to kind of um, build an infrastructure that would support businesses to be in this area. 
But then again, you got to understand that in the north side area, there's a lot of industrial sites there as well. So um, from the map we've uh, basically showed you for the last year or so, um, if you've been watching and keeping up with this meeting, uh, is there's a lot of places up there that is kind of mixed commercial, residential, business area. So what they're trying to do is definitely revitalize um, or actually vitalize. It, there's no revitalization. There's actually just literally vitalizing um, the north side to basically have their own little uh, town and access to many different amenities that uh, a lot of people who don't live on the north side take for granted. So that's kind of like the, that was the kind of the theme and the city of course uh, approved of this uh, once it was kind of cleared up that um, the bond itself is a, it's flexible in the case that they will not go above um, 723,514 maximum principal amount of tax increment. Um, they also are looking into grants which would be federally funded for these neighborhoods, which is why they have this flexible bond that can be re readjusted for lowering these tax um, increment sites. Um, this bond was passed as part of an urban renewal initiative the city pushed forward last spring to figure out what they wanted to do with the north side. And uh, Chris Bean has been working really hard with the uh, north side master plan. And I've been kind of following it because it's really interesting to see how our city is going to grow and how it's going to grow. And because the popular thing that's happening in the downtown, especially downtown Missoula neighborhood area, is that, that there's going to be a lot of infill. But now seeing the kind of a lot of pushback from a lot of neighborhoods that already are established in these certain in areas in the city uh, trying to prevent this in a way because um, it's like you have six um, you have basically six houses on an acre versus four houses on an acre and the property values are the same so that's kind of like one of the things that are kind of the issue that are happening with the infill that's happening here in Missoula so um, this it's an ongoing process and if you are interested in find out more information you go to CI missoula.mt.us. Um, it is your website of choice for everything City of Missoula. City of Missoula's website is amazing, by the way. It uh, gives you access to everything in terms of agenda items, minutes, um, basically videos where you can click on hyperlinks that'll forward you right into the point in which you want to talk about certain things. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. All I have to say about your city council. I got a new dub and stuff for you guys, and it is another wintry themed um, dub and stuff. So here's dub and stuff, and when I come back, I'll talk about events. <laughs> Yo, man, baby, I got the bare necessities that you need right here, boy. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, so, oh, so cool. Avenge me. Avenge me. Gonna chase your all over the ice. Door. Yo, man, you're letting the stink out. Get out of here. Look, another door. Gonna go check on this door. No solicitors. <laughs> Nothing like a repeated animation, right? <laughs> Whoop. Yo, man, sorry to drop. What? What's the smell? Oh! I know I'm a stereotype, but you can come in here anyway. <laughs> uh oh. Smell you later. Whoa! <laughs> Ice to meet you <laughs> forever. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Oh, I'm too young to be thug life. Yo, get me get out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> Yo, man, some people like to keep the cub down. Uh, uh, um, my name is Artsy Fartsy, and I'm here to save you. And perhaps later we can become friends. But, well, can you at least get me out of here? Well, maybe we can, okay, we can be friends. Deal. Yo, man, I said deal. Are you gonna let me out or what? Uh, all right, all right, I repent, I repent. My pride got me into the situation. Now I need to get out of here. Whoa, 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 wait, what, 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 what? Oh, snap! I didn't know you could turn ice into candy canes. <laughs> Don't mind if I did. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, actually, this is kind of weird. Maybe, uh... 
All right, get on my artboard. We're gonna Bob Ross on out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Gonna go on a fantastical journey. Gonna go, oh, uh, looks like you've fallen asleep. I guess I'll just sneak into your home and put you in there. <laughs> Smell you later. <laughs> and the moral of the story is... Venus. Jeez, that movie was weird. All right, so let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Tiny Tales at Empower Place. The, uh, the Missoula Food Bank, located at 1720 Wyoming Street, hosts a tale of Tiny Tales for kids' birth to three years of age, and it happens from 10.30 to 11 a.m. You can check it out. It tells stories, rhymes, and enjoy open reading and socializing time. A Missoula Food Bank is the place to be, and there's a lot more organizations and great things that they have there. They have a community room for people as well. So it's a great way just to kind of hang out and kind of check it all out. Um, Chromatology is at Spectrum Discovery Center. The Spectrum Discovery Center is open for visitors, and this week in their makerspace is Strawbees. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. There's a lot of different things that happen inside um, Spectrum Discovery Center. It's at 812 Tool Street, Tool Avenue, sorry about that, and it's 350 for anyone four over. If you're under three, you get in free. Religious Freedom um, at the Press Box, Kristen Juris will speak on freedom of religious expression in the workplace, school, and public arena so um, they're talking about that at the press box starting at noon today uh, communication practice group at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center compassionate um, communication practice group open to all ages no experience necessary it's free and it's also from noon to 1 p.m. you can bring lunch and it's also known as the nonviolent communication meeting groups Craigslist. If you want to learn about Craigslist, uh, is that still a thing? Um, Missoula Public Library is learn how to use this popular classified, it's not that popular, um, website and search for listings related to jobs, housing, items for sale, and discussion forums. The class will also cover how you post your own advertisements. Um, you can call them at 721-BOOK or 721 Two six six five, and and they're um, basically having this class for Craigslist from 12:30 to 1:30 p.m. in the computer classroom. Um, if you're interested in playing some card games, they have Scrabble and Bridge, or uh, spelling games, um, at the Senior Center around 12:30-ish. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening in the afternoon, a lot of yoga and a lot of stuff like that. But let's skip ahead. Downtown Dance Collective is hosting a Kaporia. Kaporia is a dynamic form of martial arts practice first developed by African slaves in the 16th century Brazil. Much more than a martial arts uh, uh, the, it, it's, it's playful and objective with dance-like and acrobatic elements, much like a physical game of chess. Um, so Jogo in Portuguese, it takes place in a circle. Roda, pronounced Roda, uh, uh, formed by practitioners who clap and sing to music led by instruments, live instruments. And this is happening from 6 p.m. And I think it's about until 7, 7.30, so you can check it out. It's at the Downtown Dance Collective. Do-it-yourself holiday glass, oh, oh sorry, uh, holiday class, and the uh, theme is glass-fused ornaments. So Downtown Arts Community Center is hosting a family-themed, a holiday-themed, oh, how do I keep on saying family-themed, holiday-themed glass-fusion class. Uh, students will create stunning, detailed, flat glass ornaments by way of fusing glass, create transparent designs if you can see your tree light through, or bold, opaque ornaments that sure to uh, garner some compliments. Um, students can make two ornaments each and are invited to make more for $12 each. Carvey demonstration in the makerspace is starting at 6.30 p.m. the Missoula Public Library. Find out how you can make simple ornaments, signs, and other cool things during this workshop that features a demonstration of Carvey. Uh, desktop carving a machine um, in the makerspace recently purchased that can, be, that can carve designs and text into wood or plastic. Space is limited to six participants and online reg registration is required. New register at um, online um, and I'm sure you can look up the link at MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it's a new wood carving um, demonstration, Carvey. Um, it, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's, that looks pretty cool. And they got they got all the new toys at Missoula Public Library. Um, Missoula Friends and Family of Autism Support Group is doing a Sunburst Mental Health Center, is hosting um, Friends and Family of Autism for free adult support group for an ASD Kids Club where people can connect with others, share ideas, get support, and build relationships with other 
in the Western Montana community. These groups are opening, ongoing, and happened um, the second and last Wednesday of the month. Every meeting features a new speaker with time for questions, connections, and problem solving. Um, if you're interested in uh, doing some Poetry Slam, E3 Convergence Gallery is hosting once again a Poetry Slam hosted by Joey Haven and Jared Bucknar. Uh, bring your A-game and compete with a verbal prowess and or be the, one of the judges to make your opinions known. Or just sit back and enjoy the show. No matter how you slice it, these slams are always fun and unique evening, so don't, know, so don't miss it. They hold these monthly, so uh, look ahead which ones you can make. Um, so you can look at, you can email them, you can contact Lily at E3 Gallery at e3gallerymissoula.com. And that concludes all your Wednesday events. I got a brand new art clip for you guys. And this one, it, actually I got two brand new art clips for you guys. I might do two of them, but I'm going to start with the one that's at the Clay Studio. And this is part of their holiday ex exhibit. So you can check that out at the Clay Studio. But here's a little taste. <laughs> Big thank you to Rick Phillips for producing and making these nice little art clips that kind of um, basically encompasses and um, I'm, the right word I'm trying to say is uh, basically uh, um, kind of uh, document all the arts that's been in, been through the city of Missoula throughout the last couple for the last couple of years. I think he's been doing it for quite a while now. I'll have to ask him um, next time I see him. So. Without further ado, let's talk about some uh, Thursday events. Uh, if you're interested in doing some things um, and donate an old coat, Southgate Mall is doing uh, community coats. Um, you can go to Southgate Mall anytime between their open hours until December 24th where you can donate an old coat. Um, community coats is a way for people who have uh, coats that are slightly worn but not completely torn to give to the Southgate Mall and their charity that goes to Missoula Textiles will clean it, uh, clean it up in men's clothes f uh, for the Salvation Army to s distribute them. Roots and um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena ha always have events going on there, so you can do some adult tumbles and have some kids jump in foam pits. It's a great way to stay indoors and stay safe, but mostly stay indoors because the weather outside is frightful. Um, but those guys might be delightful depending upon your kids reaction you don't know sometimes kids like things for five seconds before they're on to the next thing kids uh tiny tales at missoula public library is going to be from birth to 36 months um this unique program is held every tuesday thursday and friday at 10 30 a.m babies ages birth to three years of age this is the one at the um Missoula Public Library because they always have the uh, Empowered Place, which is at the Missoula uh, Food Bank now. This is Tiny Tales, the OG Tiny Tales, which is up in the Public Library. They also have story time as well throughout the week. So you want to check for that at uh, Little Bugs Early Education Network. Um, I don't know why I said network, so... <laughs> Little Bugs is a full hour of early childhood education for insectariums, classroom for children five or younger, 
and their parents. Enjoy exciting program and exploration tailored just for our youngest visitors and their parents. Each week there will be a new theme and exciting bug ambassador to hold or touch. A short story time, games and crafts. Join us while we play to learn. Um, make it and take a crafts at Big Sky Branch, Missoula Public Library. Um, come and make a unique crafts and holiday gifts this season at the Big Sky Branch. It's the Big Sky High School Library. The crafts for today is book page wreaths, and this is happening at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Uh, also tomorrow afternoon, the all insects have three body parts. It's going to be at the Missoula Insectarium. Learn more about this at Missoula Insectarium. Um, during this activity, they'll be taking closer look at the three body parts all insects have and some other fascinating characteristics that only, that only insects have. Um, Lego Club is going to be at the Missoula Public Library. It's every Thursday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. And children get to go hang out in the Dragon Rug in the children's area or otherwise specified. And they get to play with Legos. Children under 12 must be accompanied by an adult. The Chocolate Lover's Dinner, Moonlight Kitchens, is doing a festive holiday dinner with chocolate um, in, in all six courses. So basically it's going to be a fondue chocolate, salad chocolate, Ravioli chocolate, chicken mold chocolate, roasted veggie with chocolate glaze, and hot chocolate tasting. Um, so that's what's happening. It's going to be all chocolate. So if you love chocolate, it's going to be at Moonlight Kitchens at 6 p.m. And, and it's uh, BYOB, just so you guys know. Uh, and, of course, a, a percentage of ticket sales go to CFAC, uh, Community Food and Agriculture Coalition. John Flor uh, Floridus, um, Floridus, sorry, John Floridus. I'm getting it right. John Floridus. In Winter Benefit Concert, E3 Convergence Gallery, he's doing a show tomorrow night at E3. You can check it out. And a lot of the 100% of proceeds go to benefit the Missoula Food Bank. Um, it's a $15 suggestion donation at the door. It's $25 per couple. Um, and, then, and then, of course, a small children's fee there as well. Um, Christmas Carol the Musical, uh, to wrap up your uh, nights, um, tonight is a buy one, get one free. So if you're interested in going to Christmas Carol, you can buy one, get one free for that special someone. Or just someone you'd be like, yo, bro, we'll go check out Christmas Carol. And yeah, you know, the, just your bro, your sis, your, your, your homie, you go, <laughs> you go do a Christmas Carol the Musical. And yeah, it's uh, buy one, get one free uh, if you look at their uh, Facebook page. Um, yeah, you know the story, Christmas Carol. Everybody knows it, Three Ghosts. Um, tell Chris, uh, tell um, the boy um, Ebenezer that he has to stop being such a Scrooge, and he's just like, "That's my name." Is like, "Oh well, well, you better wear it out." And he's like, "Okay, I will wear it out," and he becomes a better person from it. That's like a horrible representation of the story, but you should know it. And it's going to be a musical version of that show at MCT pretty much every single night, and also matinee shows on Saturday and Sunday. I'm not bitter. Um, <laughs> Here are some of your nightly events for the next couple of nights. If you're interested in doing a uh, trivial beer suit, it's going to be at the Press Box starting at 8.30 p.m. Karaoke is going to be at the Eagles Lodge, Sunrise Saloon, and Badlander tonight. Um, but for your Thursday night events, if you're looking into doing some late night events, Bob Wire is going to be playing some country music at the Sunrise Saloon. Karaoke at Dark Horse. Um, Top Hat Lounge is hosting a rock band called with Jerry Joseph and Steve Dryzos. Uh, uh, and then, of course, VFW is hosting a DJ, uh, Volusian Nights at the VFW. So you can check out all that and more by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net. That's what's going on in Missoula. This is where you go. <laughs> Just, like, really angry about it. It's like, guys, hey, I wonder if there's nothing to do in Missoula. Hey, do you know if there's anything fun happening in Missoula? Hey, uh, I was thinking about doing something here in Missoula. Uh, do you have any idea suggestions? <laughs> All right, thanks for joining me. Uh, this has been a great show. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, next couple of days. It's the last week of Flagship. I have a lot of DVDs to burn for those kids that have made movies this last week. So good for them and good for a lot of the kids through the Flagship program. And I'll talk more about this this Friday. So. Um, thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. <laughs>